Our desire to be thin can put us in a bad situation, can basically cause us to harm our health. That's what I think is happening with this new trend I'm hearing about, about people taking diabetic medication for weight loss purposes. And apparently doctors don't seem to have an issue with prescribing diabetic medication to people for weight loss. Now, this new drug, it's not clear to me whether it's coming from doctors, but I do know that they've done this with metformin. I want us to take a really close look at why this is possibly a, one of the worst ideas that's come to weight loss in a long time. What's scary to me is that the use of this medication seems to be focused on weight loss above all else. Weight loss at any cost. Because the list of side effects is so long, I can't even say them all. So I'm just going to put them on the screen. And yet people are still taking it. Now, of course, you're not going to get every side effect. I get that. But some of the side effects that are listed there, I wouldn't want to have them. When people start doing keto, there are withdrawal symptoms. People like to call that the keto flu. Basically meaning that when you stop eating too much sugar, so when your body's not overloaded, it's able to detox from the excess. Sugar is poisonous in large amounts. So really, when you start doing keto and you live two to four negative days after about three days, I've had people tell me that that was a big enough reason. So they either started to go through keto flu, couldn't manage it, or knowing that they'd have to go through keto flu, could not even start a keto diet. That was a big enough reason to say keto is off limits. But yet, if I'm understanding this well, this long list of negative side effects isn't enough to stop people from taking a drug that was created by a pharmaceutical company. You are actually putting something in your body that's changing the way your body functions that only works if you keep taking the drug, which means that you have to take it forever. And if you stop taking it, the weight comes back. And we have no idea what the long-term repercussions of taking this drug will be on your body. For example, five, 10, 15 years from now, because remember, you need to take it forever. Our kids are watching more social media than they watch television. That means that they have access all the time because they have cell phones in their pockets, tablets in their school bags, computers on their, com on their school desks. They are always a click away from the next celebrity telling them that they need to look like this and talk like that and be like this and make this much money. And I feel like we are not allowing ourselves to see the negative that this is bringing to the thought process that we all have about our bodies, about what's healthy and what's not healthy. We think that the people that we see on social media are normal people. But what we don't really let ourselves understand is that even though, yes, I'm a normal person, the people that my kids are clicking through and seeing on their phone, on their screens, are the people that the majority of people push to the top of their social media. Your Instagram influencer, your TikTok influencer, your... If you really stop and look, you notice that they have a lot of similarities. They are typically thin. They are typically wealthy. They are typically quite knowledgeable in whatever it is they happen to be talking about, which is great. But can we keep in mind that that typical looks a certain way, is a certain way image that our child is getting likely doesn't match what they look like doesn't match what I look like doesn't match what a lot of people look like women and girls are constantly being presented with this idea that we are supposed to be just a little bit thinner than we are we are not enough as is and I want us to please can we just acknowledge that that's not reality and I think that if our kids were paying a bit more attention to the real women in their lives, what they would notice is that well, we all have different shapes and we all have different likes. And even though we might like getting our hair done and our nails done and our makeup done, it's not the number one thing we're thinking about 24 seven. 
real women walking around are not constantly fussing over their nails and their makeup and their right hair tutorial that I need to and we're not constantly well here's the problem though we are constantly worrying about our weight why because we've been told that's what we're supposed to do. we are so bombarded with this information that we're constantly worrying about our weight so much so that we're willing to do just about anything to get it under control but it's not just the girls anymore i'm about to say something and i don't want all the women to be like oh yeah finally about time because i feel like all this is doing is solidifying how big of a hold weight has on us i did not hear about semaglutide from a woman or in a conversation through women or on a like it, it what had nothing to do with women when i heard about this it was two guys talking on a podcast and the person who was taking it his name is sam parr was talking to the other co-host and he pointed out that well they were talking back and forth about how about ahead of the curve sam was for have been taking this six months before it was talked about so now what's happening is that we have men taking weight loss drugs like women used to do and probably still do do we've normalized it is that really what we wanted to do normalize it so now are we have to not only worry about our daughters taking these medications in their effort to be thin but now we have to worry about our sons and can i point out that this dude was already in great shape before he started taking that medication because he said he started taking it six months before you can go back on the channel and see that he was already in shape he was already working out he was already talking about his workout routines why is he taking it because you know why not try to lose a few extra percentages of body fat so what is this helping us to understand well obviously you don't need to be obese to get prescribed this medication so it's not just for people who have tried everything else and because this guy is already in great shape and the amount that they're paying for this medication is actually quite high $500 a week if I understood him well this is purely about people who can afford it having a workaround to lose weight faster than people who can't afford it although people are going to say well if they can afford it why not because it's not healthy it's not healthy but we're so brainwashed to believe that be thin at any cost that we're willing to take a drug that's going to harm our health well can i say 100 percent is going to harm your health i can't say 100 percent is going to harm your health why can't i say that well because the test and the trials and people taking it for 10 15 20 years haven't been done yet so we don't know what the long-term effect of taking it is but guess what we do know we know what the short-term impact of taking it is right now so first of all just sam who was taking it said that what he lived was two weeks of diarrhea again remembering that people didn't want to do keto if it caused them diarrhea but for some reason two weeks of diarrhea that's okay two weeks of diarrhea from taking a drug that's okay because it's going to lead to weight loss and you still get to eat whatever you want to eat or as a matter of fact well you just don't want to eat because that's part of the way it works right it just suppresses appetite why would i want my appetite to be suppressed what happens if my body actually needs nutrients but my appetite suppressed what happens if my body actually needs energy but my appetite suppressed nobody's thinking about that your appetite suppressed yeah you're gonna lose weight there is a problem there what was frustrating to me watching this episode of these two guys that typically i, I watch them because i find their talk about business to be quite interesting their idea was that well this medication will possibly be the end of obesity right like people can just pay not be obese anymore and so they could see the met the the marketing part of the story but i think the thing that i feel like is so short-sighted in this is well first of all what happens if i take this medication and like most things that we do my body gets used to it well if my body habituates to the medication that would mean that i would need to take more to get the same impact now has this happened yet i don't know because if it was happening 
and people were living through this, but they want to keep taking the drug, they're probably not going to complain about it. But this is the first thought that came to me. How much of the drug will I eventually end up be needing to take if I can't ever stop taking it? Because as soon as I stop taking it, the weight comes back. But then obviously my body's going to get used to it. So, but what is even more concerning to me is the action of this medication, how it causes a person to lose weight. What it's doing is it's stimulating insulin production so that the more insulin in your blood, then the more sugar gets put into cells. And it's also stimulating your, your gut to like have less uptake of sugar. Now, these two things together, you're losing weight. I want to give you a little refresher class on what insulin resistance is. Insulin resistance is caused by the pancreas increasing insulin production to force sugar into cells. Over time, cells stop responding to insulin and you have now insulin resistance. And my question is, why do we think that by speeding up this process, we are not just pushing people faster towards diabetes? I'm confused by this. Again, always open to any doctor that has information on this to comment or to have a call with me and help me understand it better. But it just seems like we are speeding up the process of a person becoming insulin resistant. Remember, the average person, according to Dr. Barry and Dr. Bickman and all kinds of, is that you've been insulin resistant for anywhere from two to 10 years before you become diabetic. Yet, increasing insulin production is the action of this drug that people are taking who are not diabetic yet. Now, as with any medication, the other thing that I want us to think about is that when your doctor gives you a medication and you go home with it, then you are being asked to use it responsibly. So what we're asking of people who are apparently I, I want to call it obsessed with losing weight because you're willing to take a drug to lose the weight, but maybe you're just concerned about your weight or maybe, but whatever. We're asking people who are so focused on weight loss that they're willing to take a drug to take it home and use it responsibly, which means that we believe that they're not going to overtake it. But when I did a little research to find out, well, what would happen if somebody took too much of this medication? Well, they would become hypoglycemic, which is a bad situation. You could pass out. You could, again, there's lots of outcomes that could be negative from becoming hypoglycemic. So I'm giving a medication to someone who's so obsessed with their weight that they're willing to take a medication rather than change their food. So again, when it comes to medication, especially a medication that makes it seem easy to lose weight, one thing we need to keep in mind is that a lot of people who are overweight are overweight because they're not eating because of hunger. So this medication, which curbs hunger, well, if I don't eat because I'm hungry, there's a chance I'm gonna take the medication, I'm still gonna eat, I'm gonna lose weight because the medication is gonna force that to happen. But I might not lose weight as fast as I want to. I might be tempted to take more of the medication than I'm supposed to. I feel like this is a huge risk. The other thing is that because a lot of us eat even when we're not hungry because we're eating out of the pleasure of eating and not because of the need for fuel and building blocks this medication doesn't stop us from eating things that are harming our health like candy and junk food and soda and and so our health itself is still going to be deteriorating right this, this medication isn't going to force us to work out this medication isn't going to force us to eat broccoli or or, or steaks all it's going to do is curb our appetite a bit. And I want to ask everyone out there, wellness warrior, have you ever been not hungry? Maybe because of stress, maybe because of medical reasons, but the one thing you were able to eat is junk food? Yeah. Somehow when we're stressed, somehow when we have no appetite, we still have space for chocolate bars. We still have space for ice cream. We still have space for garbage. Is this really going to solve the problem 
long term. So we watch a lot of these celebrities taking this medication and talking about how amazing it is. And we don't realize that those same celebrities get paid to be thin. Still couldn't seem to manage it without this medication. First of all, it should help, it should tell us all something. But second of all, we don't get paid to be thin. We have stressful jobs and families and spouses and friends and situations that come up that might push us to eat emotionally. I'm worried, Wellness Warrior, because in the keto community, I've seen it where someone starts keto and then right away they're fasting. And that same person might also be doing uh, calorie restriction and low carb. And when you talk to this person, what you find out is that, well, actually the goal is weight loss, not being healthy. And will they get weight loss by doing all of that? Likely. Is that a sustainable thing to do long-term? Not for good health, not for comfort and ability to live this lifestyle forever. And as a matter of fact, the majority of people that I see do that end up failing all together. Why do they fail? They fail because that way of doing a keto diet is actually not sustainable because it's not how it's not the definition of keto. By doing low carb, low fat, and calorie restriction, chances are very good that you're not even going to get yourself into a ketogenic state because you're not going to be able to maintain that lifestyle long enough to do that. And why is that happening? Because the focus is on the wrong thing, right? Weight loss at any cost. I want us to understand that, that that's a recipe for disaster. This medication seems risky to me. I don't believe that it's taking your health into consideration. Well, if you're a diabetic and you need medication for your diabetes, then it's a different story. But if you are overweight without diabetes at the moment and you take this medication, what I want you to consider is that even if you lose weight, if I'm pushing my body towards diabetes, is that better? What happens to people once they become diabetic? Most of them gain weight. So I'm pushing my body towards diabetes, if I'm understanding all of this correctly, and then my body will resume gaining weight. Well, was the few months, few years that I lived at a lower weight worth it compared to? Eating a healthy diet, allowing your body to get into a ketogenic state, and in that ketogenic state, losing the weight, and then keep eating the keto diet. I honestly want you to consider that semaglutide is a money-making scenario that doesn't actually give you long-term benefits. A keto diet doesn't make anybody any money, but it gives you long-term benefits. I'm talking from experience, trying to force your body to lose weight. It just doesn't work. If you want to see my fail, you can click on this video right there.